Hello, my name is JT Tepley. I'm with Elotech, and today I'm going to be discussing the various types of firmware that are available by default for your TWN4 RFID reader. Before I get started, I just want to go over the table of contents of what I will be discussing today. We're going to start off talking about the different types of keyboard emulation firmware. We're going to move on to the different types of CDC virtual COM port firmware. Next, I'm going to explain the difference between a firmware image and an app. After that, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom firmware image or production image as we call it. And then finally, I'm going to conclude the video as always giving you our company contact information. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, our TWN4 is a dual frequency NFC enabled all-in-one reader that it can read all technologies all the time. You can see I have my TWN4 plugged in here so I am ready to go. I'm also going to use something called the development pack. And then within the, app, within the development pack is the app blaster which is used to reprogram my reader. If you do not have the development pack, you can look in the description below this video and there are some instructions on how you can go about getting it. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to this program apps and firmware images and select image. And here you can see a list of all of the default firmware image files that come in the development pack. And first I want you to pay attention to this notation right here, either KX or CX. And KX is referring to those firmware uh, images that are in that are in keyboard emulation mode, and those are the ones that we're going to take a look at first. And when I say keyboard emulation mode, uh, it's exactly as it sounds. When the reader is communicating with the computer, it's actually emulating a keyboard. So the the unique ID or UID or whatever data is being sent will show up in any sort of program that accepts text. So that could be a Notepad file or a Word file. And as far as the computer is concerned, it's no different than if I were to actually physically type it out on the keyboard myself because the reader is actually emulating a keyboard. So let's start out with keyboard standard which is this one right here. I just double click and click program image and it's going to take five to seven seconds and then it's going to beep when it's done. Uh, keyboard standard standard mode is the mode that's most typically used in a real application because it's going to send the unique ID and that's it. And that's really after installation that's really the only information you're interested in. So I have a couple cards here. I'll just start scanning and you can see the UID shows up there in hexadecimal form and just know that it can easily be changed to um, decimal or binary if necessary. And you saw the operation of the LEDs, it was, a, it was a solid green light. Once I scanned the card, it flashed red and then switched back to green. And that's the normal operation in standard mode. And now I'm going to switch it to tech tracer mode and click program image. And you'll notice the LEDs um, will behave the same way in tech tracer mode as well. This is a uh, tech tracer mode is most often used. It's a good way to um, identify a card if you have a blank transponder and you're not sure what type of technology it is. This is a good way to find it out because you'll see once I scan a card, not only will the UID show up, but also the technology type and the UID bit length. So you can see that's a MyFair and this one's actually an Indala. Okay, moving right along, let's go to the next type of keyboard emulation firmware and that is keyboard dump. This is actually the last type that we have defaultly in the development pack. So again let me program this one and this time you're going to see it's a constant red light which is normal for keyboard dump. This firmware is used when uh, you want to dump all of the memory that's on the card and you want to see it all in your notepad file. So this time I need to have the transponder over the reader at all times. I'm going to choose to just rest it on the reader, keep my hands free, and you'll see as soon as I rest it, it beeps and it starts going through each sector and block of data, and it will continue to do so until it reaches the end of the card or I remove the card from the reader. Okay, so now that we looked at the different types of keyboard emulation firmware, let's look at the different types of CDC virtual COM port firmware. Okay, so the different types of CDC virtual COM port are these three here at the top, and they have a CX notation. CDC stands for Communication Device Class, and it's just referring to the protocol by which the USB port allows the reader to communicate with the computer. And the reader computer communicates with the, the computer over a virtual COM port. COM port is referring to a serial communication, so it could be like an RS-232 device, but, but, but because this is a USB interface, that's why we say virtual COM port, because it's not exactly a serial communication. Okay, so now let's select CDC standard first, so I just double click and click program, and again it just takes a few seconds and it'll beep when it's done. You'll see this is very, uh, it behaves very closely to that of keyboard standard, but now I'm going to use a terminal program to see what is being communicated over the virtual COM port instead of actually seeing the output in a notepad file. But you'll see the, um, 
the LEDs behave the same way as keyboard standard. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this port and I just scan my card. And you can see there the UID shows up as it did before. And just know normally CDC is a two-way communication. So it would normally the reader would sit and wait for a command before it responds. And you'll see that in the next type of firmware when we use SIPL protocol. But because we have a standard script file loaded on top of this CDC um, template, that's the why the reader is active and looking for a transponder. And uh, you don't need to send any commands before you get a response from the reader. Okay, so I'm going to program CDC SIPO protocol just like I did with all the other firmware images. Uh, as I mentioned, CDC uh, SIPO protocol is an example of the two-way communication where now the reader will not be active and I'm going to have to send it a command um, tell it what to tell it to do something before I'll get any sort of response. So now it's done programming. You can see the green light is still on, but this is just left over from CDC standard mode. Once I unplug it and plug it back in, uh, the LED switches off, and this is the normal operation uh, of the LEDs for CDC simple protocol. So you can use simple protocol for a couple different ways. Um, one is with the director tool, which is also in the development pack, and that's located right here. The director tool is used to easily access all of the built-in functions that are designed specifically for the TWN4 and you can uh, pick and choose from an easy to use user interface where you just select from drop down list you don't have to worry about writing any code or uh, using command codes or anything uh, if you want more information on the director tool there's a video uh, also another video on LTX YouTube channel I would suggest watching the video but just know if you're going to use the director tool that you need to be in CDC simple protocol and then the other way is you can use um, command codes and enter them into a terminal program and they're summarized here in the SIPA protocol reference guide. And I'll just do a simple um, example here. We'll just do a, an easy search tag um, function. So let me just find it in here. And this has all of the built-in functions uh, summarized. And there'll be the command line and then the response. And so let me open up this terminal program. Open up the port again. And you can see I have to type in 0500 and then the max ID bytes which the maximum is 10, so I'm just going to type in 050010. Before I click enter, I should put the card on the reader and rest, rest it there. I just click enter, and there it goes. You can see the UID starts right here, and it's the same as up here. Uh, before that, I get some response code here. This is just letting me know that the uh, response was, uh, the result was successful, the tag type, the ID bit count, and so on. Okay, so that's how you would use um, the default commands in CDC SIPL protocol. You can also, you should know, you can use your own um, custom commands. And if you would like to do that, you should contact our technical support team and there'll be an email at the end of this video. And what they would do is develop some custom firmware for you. All right, I'm sorry, a custom script file. And that script file would be loaded on top of CDC standard, uh, allowing CDC standard to behave now like simple protocol, where it would, the reader would sit and wait for commands, but now it's going to wait for your specific commands. You wouldn't be typing in this 050010. You could type in whatever you like. Uh, you just need to contact our technical support team. So let me go back to the App Blaster now. And then the last firmware image in here is another CDC firmware image. This one is Legic Transparent, and that's similar to Civil Protocol, but these are commands that are uh, specific to Legic technology. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the difference between a firmware image and an app. Up to this point, I've been programming the entire firmware image as, at once using this tab up here, but you can also do it in steps by going to the Halo Project tab, and then down here under Manage Project. Making up a firmware image is a project template first and that's where you select it here and you can either select CDC or keyboard as your template I'll just select keyboard for example and then I can create a project based on a given source code so this is where you select the second and last part of the firmware image and that is the app or the same thing source code so here I select source and I, this time I need to go to my apps folder which is also under my development pack and these are the default apps that come in the development pack so it can be tracer mode uh, standard mode or simple protocol so for example I'll just select tracer so on the previous screen I selected keyboard as my template my source code or my app is tracer and together they make up my firmware image so let me just show you another example uh, when the file is already completely together so let me go back to firmware here so CDC standard for example CDC is the template standard is the app and together they make up the total firmware image so that's the difference between an app and a firmware image 
Okay, so along the same lines, you can create your own custom firmware image or your own production image, as we call it, using the App Blaster. So I'm going to go back to this first tab here, Handle Project, and then again under Manage Project, I'm just going to start from the beginning. Uh, I'm going to choose Keyboard as my template, and I'm going to create a project based on a given source code. So here again, I'm going to select my app or my source code, and here again are the default apps, but this is where you could choose your own um, custom app if you'd like. I don't have a custom app here, so I'm just going to choose to modify an existing one just to show you what I mean. So if I go to the apps folder in the development pack, I'm going to choose to modify Tracer, for example. So let me just make this a little bigger. And this is what the source code of the uh, Tech Tracer app looks like. So if I just scroll down, this is where it returns the technology type. So I'm going to scan that My Far My Fair card again. And let's say maybe for some reason I don't want it to say My Fair. I want it to say something else. So I'll just put this is a test. So now this is my own custom app. So I'm going to save it in the apps folder. Uh, it needs to be a .c file. I'll just call it test.c. And I click enter. Okay, so now I have my custom app ready to go, and let me get back to my App Blaster, and now uh, let me go back, and I'm going to select the source this time, and, and again, you need to go to the Apps folder, and now I'm going to select my custom app instead of one of the default ones, and I just click Blast. So now that's going to program that total um, firmware image onto my reader. And if I want to save that total image where keyboard was my template and I'm using my custom app here, I can save it all as one production image using this tab. So maybe I want to send it to somebody else or I want to program multiple readers uh, in a row and I don't want to have to keep going back to the manage project tab then the source code project or the source code tab. I just want to do it all at once. So that's this is where I can save it as one file here. I can change the app characters. This is usually an acronym or something just to remember the, the firmware image by. This app description can be changed to whatever you want. I'll just call it this is a test again. And then I can change the firmware version if I so choose, but I'm just going to leave it as version 1. And I just click create image. So now it's compiling everything we did back here, and it's storing it as one firmware image uh, file, and it's saving it in the projects folder of your development pack. So let's say I unplug this reader and I plug a new one in. Now if I want to just um, program the entire firmware image at once. I can now go back to this tab as we did before earlier in the video. I select image and go to my development pack. This time go to the projects folder and here it is. This is a test. This is the firmware image that I just created. I would double click and click program image so you can see that's a faster way to do multiple um, multiple uh, readers uh, very quickly. So let me open up my notepad file again and here we go. Oh, this is some information left over from the dump. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to scan that MyFair card, and like I um, programmed it, or like I changed the source code to, it should not should not say MyFair. It should say this is a test. So I scan it, and there you go. It says this is a test right here. So that's just a way to show you that you can use your own custom apps um, and use the App Blaster to de to develop your own custom firmware images or production images. Okay, that's about it for this video. As always, here is our company contact information. If you have any sales or customer support needs, please be sure to send an email to either the first or second address you see there, depending on where you are. If you have any further questions about the firmware or have any technical issues at all, you want to send an email to our technical support team, and that's the third email down. If you look at the description below this video, you'll find a link to the data sheet for our TWN4, as well as instructions on how you can uh, attain, obtain a development pack if you would like. Once again, I'm JT Tepley with Altec. Thanks for watching.